welcome Red Cube listeners. You're all very welcome to the latest episode of our podcast. And we are delighted to welcome the strategic director um, of human resources from Trigon Hotels, Kathleen Linehan. Kathleen, you're very welcome. Good morning, Carl. Thank you very much for having me. Delighted to be here this morning. It's great to great to have you on the sh- on the show, Kathleen. And um, for our listeners, you might give people a sense of your career history to date, and uh, and who Trigon Hotels are. Certainly, um, I've been working in human resources for about nineteen years, Carl. I am um, originally started off in a manufacturing company, a Japanese manufacturing company, and um, worked there for ten years. Learned loads in terms of processes, um, manufacturing, um, HR perspective, very structured uh, Japanese environment, 5S, you know, and, and all that. And then coming to hospitality was certainly a huge change for me. Was I out of my depth beginning? Absolutely, I was. I had to learn all the terminology, for example, kami chefs, shaping dishes, and all this. So, but... Uh, here I am nine years later with Trigon Hotels now, and I have to say it's probably one of the best places that I've worked in in my entire career. And that's simply because of the, the people I work with and, and the culture and the environment. And I suppose having that trust in me to do what I do and lead HR as a strategic driver in, in the company. And why why manufacturing into hospitality, Kathleen? What 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 happened? I there? don't know. It was a strange jump, but it, you know, it really was. I, after the birth of my second child, I had decided to take a, a career gap, so I, I took a bit of a break. Um, and I had some personal circumstances as well. My mom had an accident, so I I decided it was just time to take a little time out to look after her and look after the the new addition to the family. So instead of, I decided during that time, maybe it was a bit of a life crisis that, you know, it was an opportunity to try something different. And I saw a role in the hospitality company and I thought, oh God, will I try this? So I did and I got it and I thought that that must be karma, that must be faith. So I finished up with the manufacturing company and actually I loved, loved working there. Um, and then went into hospitality and you know, for the first six months, I certainly was, oh, my God, what have I done? You know, I was so used to structure. But as you know, in hospitality, every day is a different day. And, you know, lots of things happen and you have to be able to juggle juggle all those things. But I think what, what brought me in really was that just infectious love of people and, you know, people being customers and team members. And it was exciting as well. So, um here nine years later, still here. <laughs> so, so nine years later, Kathleen, and and you talked about culture there. So, w- what sort of culture are we looking to create at Trigon Hotels? Well, like I alluded to at the beginning, Carl, I was very lucky. Um, the very first day I met my managing director, Aaron Mansworth, I immediately, you know, when you get that gut feeling that you know that, yeah, this is right. I could definitely get a sense from him that people were first. And he very much believed in the HR function and he was looking for somebody, you know, my title says strategic director, it's a bit of a mouthful, but that's exactly what they were looking for. Somebody to bring, you know, all those HR functions together and effectively drive um, those strategies, you know, it's people's strategies to to lead to a successful company. And, And if we want to be successful, We have to do that to our people and definitely our people in Trigon are are who define us and who makes us. Um, There's just a wonderful culture of belonging and listening. Listening is is the number one key um, for me. And, you know, from our MD to all our general managers, head of departments, that is the culture that we create is to, to listen, communicate and encourage. Um, you know, you would often see companies saying they're doing this, they're doing that. But when you go in, they might not necessarily be doing it because life takes over busy production plants or, or busy operations. But I can honestly say that, you know, in Trigon, we certainly do have that culture. There's almost an instinct to see if somebody isn't happy or if someone isn't working properly or 
you know, even taking into account what goes on outside of work, we can nearly know our people so well that we can read them. And, you know, from, you know, from the very top down, that is the culture that, that we embed. It's great, Kathleen. And thinking about then how we attract talent, right, in those early few weeks for new talent. Um, what, what do you do around onboarding of, of new talent? How does that look for Trigon Hotels? So we've, um, that's a, that's one of the key drivers for us in HR, you know, primarily when I started was to, to review our onboarding process, look at what we were doing and how we were attracting uh, talent and taking into account, you know, different cultures um, and different needs and people. So we, we're currently looking at our employer brand program. It's one thing that we're working on on trying to attract talent. Um, and then from the very moment they come in, our onboarding process, looking at that and, you know, looking at those first 16 weeks, which are the crucial, um, it's the crucial time in keeping talent, really. So we've done a lot of work around our onboarding process in the sense that, say, for example, our induction. Um, we actually brought a girl in from our charity partners uh, co-foundation ability to work, a lovely girl called Amy. And Amy has um, dyslexia and she has slight intellectual disability. So she set in on our induction and we asked for her feedback. She told us that it was too wordy. She didn't, like me, understand half the terminology that was used on the induction. And, you know, she said maybe people with different languages mightn't understand it either. So light bulb moment went on for us and thought, well, oh, she's absolutely right. Um, so we changed it. We now use easy read option, five sentences on screen, use a lot of pictures, video content. We developed um, a hotel lingo um, sheet. So on that sheet, we have all those things you might hear in hotels for people and explain it to them. And with different different languages taken into account as well. And that's been really helpful for people. So straight away, people are at ease. And, you know, they're not going into their departments wondering what's that, what's this. Um, we also have our managing director and our senior team also come in to the induction when they're around. There's always one comes in just to say hello and welcome them to the team. We ask for an interesting fact about them. And that's a really good one because we learn we learn about them, what they like outside of work, what their interests are. So you can straight away when you meet them again in, in a different property, you can identify them to either their their music or their hobbies or, or this and that. So, you know, once they go into operations, then we have onboarding ambassadors in all our properties. So we're very mindful in HR. We do. We have a lot of hate paperwork for compliance and that, and we have first day checklists and, and and all that. But the onboarding ambassadors are just people that they wear these badges that, that identify them, and they're the go to person for the new starters in their properties. So if they get a list of the new starters straight away, they make sure to meet them. They might introduce them to someone of similar background or age um, in different departments, ensuring that they're going to the canteens, they're not sitting alone. Um, and straight away, you know, that feeling of belonging is is so crucially important. Yeah, we can see how some of those practices will give that sense of belonging from the outset. Well, what makes a good onboarding ambassador? We have agreed, uh, our, our onboarding ambassadors are brilliant, and I'm not being biased in saying that, but like they genuinely um, feel very, um, I suppose they they value the, the jobs and they value the people coming in. And they know from the onset that it's important to make them feel welcome because we want people to stay and we want people to be happy. And they take their jobs very, very seriously. Um, and they do ensure that they have all those ticks in, in, in that list. And we have... Um, we actually have a, a great internal engagement tool called Work Vivo. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, it's how can I describe it? It's like Facebook, but not Facebook. It's an internal. It's an internal app. So uh, there are new people are welcomed every Wednesday on Work Vivo. So straight away you have people from all the different properties and 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 that welcoming them and our, our onboarding ambassadors are part of that as well. 
Um, the ambassadors also celebrate the new starters' achievements. So when when they uh, they have training badges when they start, once those badges are taken off, they put up pictures of them congratulating them on completing the training, and and then everybody interacts. So it's it's celebrating their their achievements as well. You know, early on when they start with us. Thanks, Kathleen. I'm thinking about then career and development opportunities then, right, for new talent and longer term talent. How does that look look like in Trigon? Well, we have a um, we run a lot of internal courses ourselves. So, for example, the HR team do um, disciplinary workshops. We recruitment workshops. We have emotional intelligence workshops. We're looking at starting cultural intelligence workshops. So they're all run internally. We also have our trainee management development program. So that's a 12-month program that is city and guilds accredited for anyone looking to progress up into, you know, a, a managerial level. And recently we launched our new Aspire program. And that's very, um, that's a very interesting program, Carl, because that actually took us a year to develop. And we were very mindful that it wasn't just us in HR developing it. We wanted our teams to be involved. So we actually ran a lot of focus group meetings across all our properties with team members from different demographics, different departments, and asked them what is it they'd like to learn um, in, the, in their progression. So we put together the program and it has three levels. We've got our, um, our Navigate program. So that's all people that want to navigate their career into maybe supervisors and that. And then we have our emerging leader program. So there may be our supervisors and managers that want to emerge up to the next level. And then we have our complete leader program. And that's for our executive team and our our leadership team, but also for those uh, coming up as well, because just because we are on the executive team doesn't mean that we we were short to learning. So we all have to learn and we have to, I suppose, encourage everyone else to join the program as well. So I'm very excited about the program. It covers a huge, diverse range of topics, you know, to resilience, to um, well-being and and all that. So it's very excited about it. It's great, Kathleen. And and you talked about employer branding at the start, and that's actually going to form a big part of your employer brand, being able to say to the market, well, we have a number of developmental programs aspire is one of them um, and talent will see that and say okay that's somewhere where i can go to build my career absolutely and you know we've seen um a big shift in age demographics coming into the workplace i know we it's something we do quite a lot because i love analytics and, and i i like your data will definitely determine what, what what you do for the future so for example four years ago when i started we definitely had you know a, a higher range of maybe millennials in the workplace and you know with some baby boomers and and that generation but four years on now we've seen you know our our top higher um say demographics would be gen y gen z and and that which means that we've had to adapt everything we've we want to do you know new people come into the workforce now want to progress fast they value um quick communication so Having all those things in place where, you know, we know we'll attract and retain talent. And you have to freshen up your practices all the time to suit your demographics because they're shifting all the time, aren't they, Kathleen? Absolutely, yeah, they are shifting. And and I suppose having them, like I said earlier, involved in what we're doing, you know, that was important to us. And, and for to get an understanding of what they're looking for as well. And, you know, people will get involved and buy into those things a lot more when when they've been involved in them. Isn't there really good development within the industry in general? Like if, if you look at the senior people within most sort of hotels, if you like, Kathleen, often they've started as, you know, first tier on the on, on the on the rank, if you like, and, and Absolutely. Sort of progressed. Mm-hmm. I would say that um definitely eighty about eighty five percent of our um, senior team have been um, have been working in hospitality all their lives and have developed up through the ranks, and and that's very valuable because you know even for me coming in from a manufacturing industry to hospitality, I was able to gain their knowledge and their expertise and you know um, 
it was very, it's very important and definitely within Trigon that expertise has been passed down and even one thing we introduced in our training management development program this year was our last year sorry was um our mentorship program so um senior people in the company that have worked you know made their way up are mentors for the the students in different aspects and you know we've had fantastic feedback from the students from that actually they've said it they're it's the the part they love the most because not only do you get that valuable knowledge, but it also breaks barriers. Sometimes people are, you know, might be a little bit nervous of going to the managing director or myself or, you know, or someone in the senior team. But to be able to spend 40 minutes or an hour in a setting where you're just chatting about experiences and careers, it's it certainly helped. And, you know, even personally, I've had emails from them, telephone calls, meetings outside of that mentorship. Um, that they can just feel comfortable in in chatting. But certainly hospitality, I must say, is one of the most, it amazes me the amount of people that have progressed, you know, through the ranks, coming in as maybe F&B assistants, going on to be general managers. Yeah, yeah. And we have to collectively, I think, make sure we shine a light on those positives within the industry that are that that are there. And 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 you can see how the like even the mentorship practice there, how would how that would build belonging as well for 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 an individual. One of the things we've seen, Kathleen, in some organizations over the last couple of years is reverse mentoring, where the younger generation will mentor um the older generation around. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like social media and how they take in information and communication as well. So that's that's been interesting. We've, we've, yeah. we've seen that happen out there, you know. L- looking at CSR, um, Kathleen, I know Trigon do great work in CSR. And g- give us a sense of what you do and how you believe that CSR work impacts on your culture. It's uh, very, very important to, to us, uh, Carl. I suppose four years ago when I started, we built up relationships with Ability to Work, a wonderful organization in Cork that they're part of Pooh Foundation. And they help people with different accessible issues um, gain employment in the workplace. So that's where we kind of started. And um, four years later, we have six members of Ability to Work working um, in Trigon Hotels. And they they were fantastically supportive to us in terms of you know, job coaches coming in and supporting that person when they came to the workplace. But it was also a huge learning for us. You know, we understand now more than ever that one size does not fit all. And, you know, while we do have to have our training plans and our SOPs, it's also important to acknowledge the individual. And maybe, you know, people learn in different ways. And, you know, we've had to, we've incorporated that into our work practices now. Um, we've actually hired internally two trainer roles um, in, the, in the properties. So they are now responsible for the new people when they come in. So while we do the training plans and SOPs, we also do video content. We do easy read format. We're now developing um, QR codes. So for instance, if you, if you were shown how to change a, a keg for the bar, for instance, which you might have forgotten, so you can now scan a QR code and that video will come up and show you how to do it. So by looking rather than reading, um, and we've just found that like that's brilliant. You can scan your code, you can see it being done and, and you do it. Because as you alluded to earlier, all these younger generations are phenomenal on, on social media and YouTubing and uh, and all that. So we've, you know, having that collaboration with Ability to Work has broadened our mindset on you know, the way we do things and adapting. And we've developed um, a wonderful relationship with them. Last year, we um, we worked together on a sensory garden above and Cove Foundation. So we saw a plot of ground. We spent one year um, working with them and developed that garden. All our team members went up every Tuesday from managing director. Aaron was very, very involved in it. Our general managers, HR teams, you know, everyone across the, the properties. Um, and our chefs actually um, use quite a lot as well. So like the produce that's growing there, they use down in our kitchens. And we have a new group executive chef hired this year. So he's going to develop that further with them. 
and uh, hope to use um, that produce more in our kitchens as well, which leads on to sustainability, something that we're we're um, very, very mindful of as well and have several sustainability working groups across all the properties. And we've definitely found that that's really helped our engagement and retention of team members because they, they are values that are important to them. And that's what, you know, a lot of prospective candidates might look for in a workplace, you know, something that aligns with their own values. So, you know, the work we've been doing around CSR, sustainability, environment, has, has we found it very positive um, in attracting and retaining talent. As a, as a barman in my earlier days, I would have really benefited from that QR code, Kathleen. I, I, I really struggled with changing kegs. It wasn't wasn't the best part of my <laughs> Yeah, I would have benefited from that. Th- thinking about the hospitality industry, right, and the employer brand, how we attract more talent. Um, what would you like to see more of in terms of the industry and what it focuses on? Well, you know, having come from, um, like I said earlier, a manufacturing environment into hospitality, you know, sometimes I see that hospitality gets very negative, you know, um, press coverage and that. But I can honestly genuinely say that with with Trigon, um, that is actually not the case. And I've seen it across hospitality, having been involved in a number of platforms. Rates of pay are very competitive um, now. Um, they're a lot more mindful of, you know, well-being and, you know, learning and development opportunities. And, you know, there's a genuine um, sense of caring for its people and putting people first. So I'd love to see, um, you know, I'd love to see us probably talk more about what we do, because maybe that's something that we do shy away from. And maybe we're a little bit afraid of, of talking. And, you know, that's something that I would definitely encourage people to do through their employer brand um, programs and not be afraid and, and talk about the positives because there are a huge amount of positive, positives um, working in hospitality. I mean, you know, even what the perks alone, having your, your meals for free when you're, when you're eating, you've discounts to um, food outlets across the, the, the properties. Um, you know, taking into account, like, you know, people's values you know they're getting a, you know they're really out there but we just don't talk about it as much um and you know we've we've actually launched a policy recently um our fertility friendly policy um you know which is a very um i think it's a very forward step in in any industry where we've kind of acknowledged you know that people are going through fertility difficulties and we now have introduced 5 paid days for anyone going through fertility treatment with um, supports there as well for for their partners, you know, and I think that's that's very forward leading, um, you know, and there's a lot hospitality does around all those that, like I said, we just don't shout about as much. Yeah, I mean that's such a progressive practice, and and like even the short time you've been with us today, Kathleen, like you've given us a sense of great practices out there that's supporting people in terms of that belonging. Um, I know myself from meeting yourself and the leadership team, the the time and attention you take to understand and listen to your people is a great credit to try. Yeah, thank so. you. Thank you. Absolutely. And, you know, we we do analyze to death probably sometimes ourselves. But, you know, I, I think that for us, you know, take, for example, our surveys, we run them twice a year and we, we take them extremely serious. And from our surveys, create you know fantastic action plans and go back uh, and make real change and I think that's been a contributor to one of our successes is just showing our people that we listen and we we take action and we hear you yep moving into sort of chill out mode Kathleen right so um have you a favorite show you know the way there's about 35 streaming platforms now and Netflix and Disney and all of that what's your what's your favorite show at the moment. My favourite show. My favourite show, Carl, and it doesn't sound very good coming from a HR director, would be without doubt Peaky Blinders. And I love um I Narcos is actually another favourite of mine again, doesn't reflect very good on me, but um I I have Peaky Blinders has to be my number one. I think Killian Murphy outstanding. Um I'm addicted to it. 
so good, Kathleen. I agree on both those counts, Peaky Blinders and Narcos. And then you have Narcos Mexico as well. I know, uh, I've actually seen it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you on, on, on that. Kathleen Trigon Hotels, congrats on being certified as a great place to work. You've given us a, a real sense as to practices and the efforts you make at Trigon Hotels to create that great culture for your people. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Carl. My pleasure. Red Cube listeners, thank you very much for joining us today. Please subscribe to our podcast if you haven't already done so. And of course, leave us a review and tell us what topics would you like us to cover in the future.